Being a retro gamer in 2018 can be pretty difficult, mainly for two reasons. The first reason, of course, is the high price of a lot of these retro games. You just want to play the game, but it costs an arm and a leg to play it on the original console. But I think the biggest problem, of course, is hooking up your old consoles to your HD television. It's such a pain in the ass. So many of these devices that are out there just don't work. You can find these things on Amazon all the time, these supposed upscalers. Oh yeah, plug in your composite and it'll play on your HD television. I I bought this thing for like $30 because I wanted to play my PC engine on my HD TV. And guess what? It didn't even work. It wouldn't even transmit a signal to my HD television. And there's so many of those things out there that people get suckered into getting, and they're all really just crap. Of course, there's awesome things like the Framemeister out there, but that's just so expensive. For someone like me, I just can't imagine spending $400 and then having to tinker with all these settings to get it to play on your HD television and look as good as possible. I really just want something that's a plug and play solution, something that's simple, but does a really good job. And for the longest time, there hasn't been anything quite like that, especially something that's affordable. But all of that is changing, folks. I was sent the Retro Tink version 2 from my buddy Ryan over at Castlemania Games. He said, I want you to check this out. And I was like, okay, whatever, you know, another little plug and play box. I'm sure it won't work, but good, good lord. Good lord, this thing is an absolute game changer. This is probably the most important thing in retro gaming that's come along in a long time. So what is the Retro Tank version two? What does this thing do and why is it so important? Sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's get into this bad boy. Hey, RGT85, hey Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards. So you guys know I'm not the most technical in-depth person when it comes to devices like these. If you like the in-depth stuff and the you know nitty gritty of the device, make sure you guys go check out my buddy Rob at Retro RGB. He actually did an interview with the creator of this device. They definitely got into the nitty gritty of things like that. So if you're interested in more technical talk and technical jargon, check out that interview after this review. But basically what I'm looking for is something that will play my games on my HD television, will hook up to my Elgato HD 60 simply so that I can play my games and capture footage and something that works well and is inexpensive now this device is about a hundred dollars this is the retro tink version 2 and upon first glance it looks very simple you see it has a plexiglass cover on here and then you can pretty much see what it does it has component S video and composite and basically the way that you select between these devices is on these little buttons there's little buttons right here this bottom button is for the component S video and composite switching and this top button is for smoothing there's a smoothing mode built into this device now I was a bit skeptical on how good this would work obviously there's a lot of different systems out there and there's a lot of different ways to use these systems whether you're talking about the S video composite or component cables so I gathered up some of my old retro consoles and got different cables for them. I wanted to check out S-Video, I wanted to check out Composite, and I wanted to check out Component and see what this device was capable of because at a little under $100, if this thing works well, it could be an absolute game changer. On the back of it, you have a micro USB slot, which is the power supply, and you have your HDMI out. Now, it is a mini HDMI out that connects onto a standard HDMI cable and that is included in the price for under $100. It does not come with the micro USB charger. You can get a version that does come with the micro USB charger, but you probably have a million of them laying around anyways. But enough about what this device can supposedly do. It doesn't mean anything if we don't put this device through the trials, try out different systems, try out different outputs, and see what it's capable of. So let's get into it. All right, so first off, we're going to take a look at the PC Engine with Street Fighter 2. Now, this is being played with a six-button controller, and it is being played with composite video. So this is just standard composite video that will be projected onto your HD television. And wow, it looks pretty good. I do have smoothing mode on right now. Like I said, the device offers a smoothing mode that you press on a button. And now we're going to turn the smoothing mode off so you can sort of see the difference. Um, with smoothing mode off, there's definitely some more interference I feel but you know it's uh, it's a composite image 
on an HD television. Like, it shouldn't look nearly as good as it's looking, especially with the cost of the device being, you know, roughly $100. So, yeah, I'm very pleased with this. There's really no uh, sort of latency issues or lag input, and it's just crazy how good that, you know, standard composite video actually looks on this device. And I know what you're saying to yourself, RGT, we want to see the smooth mode off and on next to each other, so that way we can see the difference. Well, I'm a man of the people, baby, so here we go. We've got smooth mode off and smooth mode on obviously smooth mode on is going to look a bit better when it comes to this system but either way like it's pretty damn impressive to see how good it looks on your HD television now moving on we are moving on to the Sega Saturn and for the Sega Saturn I'm using HD retrovision cables which are phenomenal cables but there is one little drawback with them is that they are a bit particular with a lot of capture devices and a lot of you know newer HD televisions because of the 240p signal however with this device it's not a problem so the HD retrovision cables utilize the component cable slot of this device and fantastic like it's so good we have smoothing mode off right now and it still looks this good and I absolutely love Die Hard Arcade it was the first arcade game I ever beat because we went to look at a timeshare in Florida with my family and the guy gave me a bunch of coins to use in the arcade at the timeshare and so I just sat there and played this game so you know Die Hard Arcade is an absolute classic in my opinion on the Saturn it looks great right now with the HD retrovision cables we're gonna turn smooth mode on so that you can see there is a bit of a difference I think it looks a little bit better look at this boss character just looks absolutely fantastic and then once again we are going to put them up side by side so that you could see any differences obviously there's going to be a little bit less noise a little bit less jaggies with the smooth mode on but either way these HD retrovision cables are running fantastically on the retro tank and I just can't say enough good things about it now we got to take a look at an awesome game and that is virtual fighter 2 which is arguably one of my favorite fighting games of all time just because it's so much fun we have smooth mode on right now and you can see the game looks absolutely fantastic like this is such an old game nowadays it's crazy to think about how old it is but it still looks good you know whether you're playing it with this device or without this device I think it looks great but obviously it's going to look better with this device so smooth mode is on the game looks very smooth uh, the characters you know there's not jaggies going on with the exterior of the characters now we're gonna pause it we're gonna turn smooth mode off and you can see how it sort of jumps a little bit right there and so that's a real-time transition from smooth mode on to smooth mode off and I think it's a diff definitely noticeable nothing too crazy but definitely noticeable we're gonna put them up side by side Side now so that you can see I do prefer smooth mode on but either way I think it looks great and this retro tank is just blowing me away now let's check out another system the Nintendo 64 and yes we have Mario with smooth mode off and you can see some jaggies going on but still this is N64 with composite and since it's a Nintendo game we can only show brief clips but hey let's turn smooth mode on and you can see the game is a bit smoother now once again this is standard N64 composite and it looks this good on your HD television. I was really impressed with the colors and the vibrance of everything going on but this next game I think shows a little bit more of what uh, you know how good everything looks and that's WCW NWO World Tour I don't remember this game looking this good when I was like 12 playing it for the first time We have sting going up against bogus sting, which was a WCW NWO storyline I wanted to play revenge to be perfectly honest with you, but I couldn't find it I don't, I don't know where it is. It must be somewhere in my stack of N64 games But World Tour is a good alternative and a very fun game. I was a big WCW fan growing up NWO is still for life, but yeah, you can see like everything Everything just looks so nice and so clean and crisp and I'm just really really impressed with this device it's it's really hitting a stride with me and the simplicity of it is so good we've got bogus sting bleeding I'm not gonna pin them for you guys I don't want you guys to sit through a whole match but I just wanted to show you guys bogus sting ain't no match for sting now moving on we have the Dreamcast and this is with s video quality as this device also supports s video so composite component and s video now these are some cheap s video cables off of Amazon with smooth mode currently on and you can see that Sega GT is looking pretty damn impressive running 
on the Dreamcast. I'm really, I, I just can't say enough good things about this device. Like, it's crazy how good everything looks. Now we've turned smooth mode off, and you can see it still looks pretty good in my opinion, but I think smooth mode does look a little bit better, especially with the car models and whatnot. There's a little bit of interference and noise going on, but still, this is a standard crappy S-Video cable that I bought for eight bucks off Amazon. You can look at the side-by-side -side and everything, you know, is pretty crystal clear how good this device is, but this final game, it, it's it's the bee's knees like I was just I couldn't believe how good it looked and uh, you know this is like I said standard as video Marvel versus Capcom on the Dreamcast look at these colors look at this crispness with smooth mode on like this is this is just absolute insanity this game when I was playing this game I was my mouth was literally open and just I was like wow like my Dreamcast has never looked this good even on you know a C CRT TV with S videos, never mind, you know, a newer HD television that's not supposed to be able to do these things. The retro tank, it just hits all the right marks for me. It's a simple device. It's a clean device. It's a cheap device. It's under $100 and it does everything I wanted it to do. It allows me to capture things. All this footage was captured with my Elgato HD capture card, which does not work with uh, retro consoles at all. The other Elgato does if you have the appropriate thing to get the component cables or the AV, but this is just plug and play. So let's get into my final thoughts on this device. All right, so what do I think about the Retro Tink version 2? I mean, it's pretty obvious what I think about it. This thing absolutely kicks ass. Whether you are a hardcore enthusiast who's looking for a great image quality, or you're just a, someone who wants to be able to play all your games on your HD television and be able to capture them via, you know, an Elgato HD, this device is, is awesome. It's an absolute game changer, in my opinion, just because of the price of it. At a little under $100, I think this is affordable for any retro gamer. And if you're a hardcore enough retro gamer where you have the system, and you have the games and you want to be able to play them on your HD television, I think this is a solid, solid investment. It's an absolute fantastic piece of product. I have literally no complaints about it. It did everything I wanted it to do and it looked great doing it. It really breathes life into these games and it just makes life so much easier because you don't have to worry about different cords and different settings and different things. You literally plug it in, you plug in whatever you want to use, composite component, S-Video, and then boom, you're good to go. You press a button, you're good to go. So I cannot recommend this product enough. Um, definitely, you guys will want to check this out. You can get it through their website or you can pre-order it through Castle Mania's website as well. I'll have links to both the designer's website of Retro Tank and Castlemania's uh, website in the description box down below. But seriously, people, I think the gameplay footage speaks for itself. Like, that was mind blowing. When I saw that, that Marvel vs. Capcom, I was like, I'm done. Like, this is the greatest thing in the world. So, awesome product. Definitely, you guys will definitely want to check out this product. And I want to thank Ryan from Castlemania for sending this over for me to check out. And I'm absolutely blown away. So, let me know what you think of this device in the comments section down below if you plan on picking one up and thank you for checking out this video if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications i'm doing all sorts of gaming stuff on here from retro to modern and as always i will catch you guys on the next video later